Today we're going to talk about mezcal. It's an agave distilled spirit. Want to learn more? Stay tuned. Welcome to Cop Man Cocktails. I'm Derek Shorman. Today we're going to talk about mezcal. If you're new here, this is the ultimate channel that you come to if you want to learn a little bit about bars, bartending, mixology, stuff that you want to do at home. You want to impress friends. You want to become the best home mixologist in your group. You want to be the, the guy everybody wants to invite to parties. This is where you want to be. And today, it's all about mezcal. We're going to be starting mezcal month, so it's pretty good to lay a foundation. Get you some, some facts. Here are some five interesting things that you probably don't know about mezcal, but should, especially before you start drinking some of the drinks we're making. And because it's fun. Before we begin, what I want to do is talk a little bit about denomination of origin. Also, an appellation of origin, I think is the name, or appellation de controle. I don't know. It's got some funny names. Um, certain spirits, certain foods, have the ability or have a certification that states where they must be created in order to have a specific label. Olives sausages, beers, vinegars, and, of course, the one everybody always remembers, champagne. It's not sparkling wine, it's champagne. Why? Because it's made in the Champagne region of France. The same goes for tequila. Tequila has a denomination of origin, which says, in order to be tequila, it has to be made in a few specific states of a specific variety of agave, and then you can make tequila. If it doesn't fit that, it's not tequila, it's probably mezcal. Understanding that there's these certifications, and there is one for mezcal, helps to understand why there's so many things that might not even be called mezcal, but have a very similar taste. So keep the denomination of origin in mind as I go through this. Number one, tequila is a mezcal, but mezcal is not a tequila. Everything distilled from agave is in some way a mezcal. For instance, we call it tequila. Watch, this is a reposado tequila, uh, Alma tequila. It's made from Blue Weber agave in the state of Jalisco. Its denomination of origin dates back to 1978. That denomination of origin says that there are five different regions or five states within Mexico where tequila can be made. It just happens to be that Jalisco makes the largest amount, at least that we usually see in the United States. Mezcal didn't get a denomination of origin until 1995. So tequila's got like 20 years up on Mezcal in terms of how it was labeled and how it was certified. But if you're a big Family Guy fan, Peter would be considered Mezcal. This Tequila might be Stewie. You have a broad category called Mezcal, and then you have all of its little children. Which brings me to point number two. Not all Mezcals are labeled as Mezcal. That's a Mezcal. It's labeled as Tequila. Ricea. Another agave distilled spirit. Still considered a Mezcal. Still made in Jalisco, but a different variety of agave. There's over 50 varieties of agave, and that doesn't mean there's 50 different names given to the different Mezcal variants, but those that have the denomination of origin usually have an isolated area that they're from. Oddly enough, Ricea doesn't have a denomination of origin. So how it gets labeled and whatnot isn't necessarily certified as much as it might be if it were, say, a tequila. Bacanora. It's an agave spirit made from a specific variety of agave. And while mezcal could be produced from eight different states, Bacanora and tequila can only be made from one agave variety. This one is Blue Weber. This one is not Blue Weber, it's something else. There's a lot of them. They don't all have easy names that you can pronounce. And while we're talking about it, there's a cousin to agave called Sotol, or the Desert Spoon. That's a completely different variety. It's a subspecies, or actually it might be a super species. It's, it's a species, or maybe a grandfather, or a cousin, or a neighboring species once identified as agave. It's been reclassified, which puts Sotol outside of Mezcal and outside of this entire conversation, yet, very similar in taste. Sure, all the varieties are gonna have different flavor profiles and notes and hints of grassiness or smokiness or whatnot. So Toll has that same character body of smoke, it's roasted, it's, it's got a lot of the same distillation mechanisms and methods, it's just not necessarily a mezcal. You can find Bacanora in the state of Sonora, kinda outside of Arizona if you jump over the wall. Point three. And slight misconception in some cases. Mezcal is a smoky, smoky, flavorful product like tequila, but with smoke. Not always. Zygnum is another example of a mezcal that doesn't have any smoky properties. Unfortunately for me, the common man cocktail crew love a nice smoky mezcal, so we go hunting them down. But you really don't know what you're going to get until you taste it. This one, not so smoky, so I probably wouldn't buy it again. But I enjoy that smoke. I like the balance. So you've got to kind of explore the categories and the different varieties to understand what you really love. How do they get some of those smoky properties, though? You take those agave plants, and unlike tequila, where you start to press out the sugars, you stick these in a pit 
cover them with hot coals and dirt, and let them sit there for two to three days. That smoke just, it builds in it, like sort of like a, a luau. When you go and you go to a luau and you're eating that smoked pork and it just falls off the bone and it's so delightful and tasty. Mezcal is much the same way, not as meaty. And a lot of those master distillers have been doing this for generations. It's not something I probably could do in my backyard and pull off. But when you're buying product off the shelf from a lot of these folks, probably all of these folks, there's hundreds of years worth of knowledge and experience that goes into it. Matter of fact, there's like 500 years of experience, uh, 500 years of creation of Mezcal. And one of the things you might see, speaking of that smoky property, are those that become over-smoked and just smoke bombs tend to be those, uh, experts say, that are hiding the imperfections of the product. So if their product ain't so good, maybe you should just bump up the smoke, that dominates the flavor profile, you lose that balance, and you create a smoke bomb, which some people might think this is what mezcal is supposed to taste like. But really, you should have a good balance of the agave flavor, sort of like the tequila, the saltiness, the citrus, the limes, the vegetal, the grasses, along with the smoke. Next fun fact, Espadine is one of the most popular varieties of agave when talking mezcal. Blue Weber for tequila that everybody knows. Espadine is your mezcal most popular. Here's some proof. Espadine, Espadine, Espadine. 100% de agave, Espadine. Doo -doo -doo. Espadine, Espadine. So why is that? Well, it turns out I think Espadine is probably the easiest to produce, to create. It's still going to take you eight years to grow these agave plants, but at the same time, having ones that you can grow reliably more easily makes for a slightly cheaper product in cost, not in quality, and more people have access to it so you can get more brands. So it's good for everybody. But there's other varieties. So there's like what, another 40, 49 varieties? Usually they say, this one is uh, agave augustifolia or something. This is uh, Salmania crassispina tubas, tubasishi, maybe? I, there's, there's a lot of them. Tobala is another uh, agave variety that's grown like at the top of high altitudes in canyons. So it and, it and it also produces the least amount of sugars. Low yield, hard to get, makes for a more expensive product. But some of those rare flavor profiles are going to be searched by mezcal enthusiasts. So there's a market for everything. Fourth fact, mezcal doesn't need a worm. It doesn't even have worms. They're really larva. It doesn't really matter. You shouldn't put bugs in your products. They say it changed the taste. I would not doubt that. You throw random objects and things inside of a bottle of alcohol, it's probably going to change the taste. It originally started more as a gimmick, and then it kind of caught on, and now there's this public assumption that mezcal has to have a worm in it, so people put that in there, make it more authentic. The worm didn't grow in the bottle. People are literally putting it in there so that it... it it's there. It it makes don't do it. Just don't if don't buy mezcal that has worms in it. That tells me that the product is trying to get you to take it off the shelf with wow factor. But like, there's no worms in any of these. Another unfortunate fact: mezcal is not necessarily the cheapest of products. Tequila you can usually get from anywhere from twenty two dollars up to hundreds of dollars. Uh, obviously, as it goes up, the age goes up, the flavor goes up, the complexity goes up. How long it's been sitting in a barrel makes a big difference to how much it's going to cost. So there's a lot of varieties, but you can get lower end product in the 20s that's still serviceable as a tequila and isn't that crap Jose Cuervo gold. Mezcal, on the other hand, you're going to struggle to find anything that's lower than $27. I've got a couple in here that are $27. I have a couple in here that are 100 a couple in here that are 60 Most I didn't pay for. Thank you, all the brands that shipped them. Some I have spent $68 to purchase. I finished off plenty of bottles of Montalobos. Uh, Espadine. Montalobos is in the $30 range. So really you're looking at anywhere from, you know, high 20s to $120 depending. Typically those $120 bottles are sipping. Mezcal is a great sipping product, just like a scotch. It can be treated like a scotch. The lower product costs better in mixed drinks, and you could pretty much put anything in that mixed drink that you want. Uh, one of the cool factors, and in, in this, this does play a little into the price, but the flexibility of Mezcal is so extreme that it could be used in replacement of a whiskey, it could be used in replacement of a gin. It's got those floral essence and notes of a gin. It's got the smokiness that you can get from a, like a peaty scotch. 
Yet at the same time, it can play in any vodka cocktail. Obviously, it can play in any tequila cocktail because tequila is a mezcal. So any of the mezcal in the family is still going to be able to shim right into those drinks and taste fantastic. Yet you can still use it for your rum cocktails and your daiquiris. So that cost that you're putting into it plays across a lot of drinks. So it's not one of those products like chartreuse where you're going to then spend $65 and you're going to have to find those drinks that it fits into. And one of the final notes that I want, a takeaway note for you about Mezcal for those that are like, ah, I'm still on the edge. Think about this. Tequila is a blue Weber agave. If you like tequila and you're like, I love the varieties and flavors and the different brands that come up with their own little uniquenesses and their twists. They've got the Reposados, they've got the Añejos, they've got the Blancos and then all the stuff in between. Now imagine, instead of having a single variety of distilled spirits, you've got 50 varieties to go on. All the terroir and everything that you can get from the properties of the ground and the earth and the sun that you get from your tequila, you can also get from Mezcal, except for 50 different varieties. And you can find most of mine are Hoven, but you can find like this as a Reposado and other Reposados and Añejo uh, Mezcals out there. Pricey, yes, but they exist, which means you have a ton of variety to go from, plus the aging qualities within those products and those, those different categories. Now prepare yourself for Mezcal month. We're gonna be doing a bunch of recipes. We're gonna be exploring all kinds of Mezcal, so you're gonna get yourself educated really soon. Sidebar, Mezcal drinks above, tequila drinks below. It's time to start exploring agave, people. Let's get into this. Stay tuned for Mezcal month. We're teaching you how to drink.